Hey, we're at the grocery store and we're uh, we're looking at buying a bag of sugar and we're going to use rates to figure out which one's the best buy. We have four different options here. We have a one kilogram bag and it costs three dollars. We have a two kilogram bag and that costs four dollars. We have a four kilogram bag and that costs six dollars. And then we have this huge ten kilogram bag. And it costs fourteen dollars. So how can you work out which one's the best buy? You can use rates to figure it out. You compare the mass to the price, and we're going to do that right now. All right. Uh, in the store, we were looking at buying uh, bags of sugar, and we had four different options. Uh, we had the small bag, the one kilogram bag, for three dollars, two ninety nine really, but let's call it three dollars. Keep things simple. We had the next size up that was two kilograms, and it was four dollars. We had the next size up uh, was four kilograms, that was six dollars, and then we had the, the big huge 10 kilogram bag, and that was 14 dollars. Now, if we want to compare and think about which is the best buy, we're going we're gonna to use rates to do that. Okay, we're going to write a rate for each one of these and use that as a comparison. Now, we have quantities that have different units, right? So that's why we're going to use rates. We are going to compare the price of the thing, the, the bag, to the mass of the bag. This first one cost three dollars and it is for one kilogram. So writing that as a rate, um, three dollars for one kilogram, you can write that as three dollars per kilogram. The second one you can write a similar kind of a rate here because you have four dollars for two kilograms. Now we're going to try and write a unit rate for that as well. This first one is three dollars per kilogram. The second one we can write a unit rate four dollars for two kilograms. You can divide those numbers and write it as four divided by two is two dollars per one kilogram, right? If you have four dollars for two kilograms that's the same as two dollars for one. Okay, you divide the numbers and then your units are in your answer there, right? So we have two unit rates here so far. So already the second bag is cheaper per kilogram because of that, because that unit rate is lower. The third one here is uh, we have six dollars for four kilograms. If you divide those numbers, in other words, if you divide six divided by four in your head or grab a calculator, uh, six divided by four gives you 1.5, right? If you divide that on a calculator, it's going to come up as 1.5, but uh, we have to understand here that that's money, so it's we're going to write it as 1.50. So it's $1.50 per kilogram. That's the unit rate in that case. And then that last one, again, was 10 kilograms for $14. So $14 for 10 kilograms. If we divide that, we're going to get 14 divided by 10 gives us 1.4, so it's $1.40 per kilogram. All right, so there's our four different unit rates. We have a unit rate for each one. So you've taken, you've taken rates that all have a different term on the bottom and a different term on the top, right? They're all different numbers on the top and the bottom. It's hard to compare them like that. So what you do is you make them so that they all have a similar, so they all have the same term on the bottom. In other words, you make them all into a unit rate so the bottom term is one. This is all per one kilogram. And then it's easy to compare, right? Cheapest one is this one down here per kilogram. That's only $1.40 per kilogram. It's less than half per kilogram if, than if you buy them one kilogram at a time in the small bags. Right now, now often the the largest bag is going to be the cheapest per unit, right? This one is the cheapest per unit, which is a kilograms a unit in this case. Not always true. You have to look carefully, but often the biggest one is going to be that is going to be the cheapest per kilogram. Now that said, if you don't think you're ever going to use in your lifetime ten kilograms of sugar, you have to also consider that, right? But that last one is the cheapest per kilogram. Let's look at something else here uh, that you might buy in the store, uh, uh, peanuts. And often for things like this, sometimes you can buy them in two different ways. You can buy them in bulk out of those bulk bins, sort of, right? Uh, 
and you can buy them in a bag, right? Lots of things are sold in those those different ways. So let's say if you had these two options, this is even harder to compare, right? Because number one, the units of both things, the units of the price here are different, all right? The units of the price are different, ones in dollars, ones in cents, and this is in grams, this is in kilograms, right? So we have to make a comparison this way. We're still going to write a unit rate for each one and see how we do. Um, the first one here, we're going to again do, uh, it already is a rate. If you look at it here, there's a slash in between, right? 59 cents per 100 grams, but I'm going to write it as a fraction. 59 cents per 100 grams. I'm actually going to change, instead of 59 cents, I'm going to write it as 0.59 dollars because then it's the same as we want this to be in the same units as that one is. So I'm going to write 0.59 dollars and I'm going to write 100 grams. Now for the other one, I'm going to write it as well. I'm going to put 750, but instead of 1.5 kilograms, I'm going to write that in grams so that we can compare it to this one. So we got the same unit as over here. So I'm going to put 1500 grams. Now, you could divide both of these. You could divide 0.59 by 100, and you get something per gram. And I will just show you that right now. And then I'll tell you why maybe it's a better idea to leave it as is. Because, so if I take 0.59 dollars, and I divide it by 100, I'm pretty sure you know without even the calculator, that's 0.0059. That would be 0 0.0059, whoops, 59 dollars per gram. This this rate represents it, if you want, and you can use that rate, and you can do the same thing over here and divide by 1500. But often in the store you'll see you don't have a rate per gram for something like peanuts because no one's going to buy one gram of peanuts. So often they use what they call, instead of changing it to an outright unit rate here where the bottom term is one, right? The bottom term is one here. This is one gram. They'll use what they call a unit price. This can be a unit price where the unit on the bottom, even though it's not one, that's a reasonable size unit that they could sell is 100 grams. Right, a lot of things get sold by a hundred grams because that's a normal size amount, a normal amount to buy. So I'm going to leave this one as is, a hundred grams. But I am going to realize that this one is per fifteen hundred grams. So I want to make this per one hundred grams here, so that I can compare it to this one because this one's per one hundred grams. So as long as I make this one have the same number on the bottom, I can make that comparison. So since this is 1,500 grams, and I want it to be 100 grams, if I divide it by 15, that'll, that'll work for me. If I divide this bottom number by 15, I get 100. So if, as long as I divide the top number by 15, I'm going to maintain the, what, what the rate is. All right, so if I take that, if I take my 750 here and divide by 15, that gives me 0.5, right? And again, it's money, so it's 0.50, it's 50 cents, 0.50 dollars, right? If I, let's put this side by side for a second here just to make sure we see what we're doing. All I did there is I said, this is needing to be divided by 15, so this is needing to be divided by 15. And then I can compare them, right? Because I got 59 cents per 100 grams, Whereas over here, it's only 50 cents per 100 grams. So in this case, actually, the the buying the peanuts in a bag is actually cheaper than buying them in bulk. All right. So as long as you make a as long as you make a rate that is per the same amount on the bottom, it doesn't even have to be a unit rate. This is this is what they call a unit price, which sometimes doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to have a one on the bottom. It can have 100 grams or something like that unit price which is it's kind of like a unit rate it's a I'm gonna say it's a special unit rate used for 
buying shopping. It's for it the, the amount that it's for is not necessarily one, but it's for a reasonable amount that someone would buy. How about if we say a standard amount? someone might buy. Just makes it easier to compare things. When you're in the grocery store, often the little uh, the little price tags on the shelves uh, will show something per 100 grams, even if they give a price for something else, because they want you to be able to make comparisons and be smart about it. All right, so that's making comparison using using rates to compare options and make decisions. And the important idea is that to make comparisons between things, you can use rates and by changing, uh, if you have various options to compare, creating some kind of a unit rate where the second term is the same for all of them, one or, you know, in the second case here, a hundred. As long as you create a rate where the second term is the same, you can compare the options pretty easily. Right? That's it.